gowned, hooded and dog-collared, the past wardens of Radley looked down from on high at today's Radley and the Cedines in Hall. The next portrait in this illustrious line of scholars and divines will depict the college's 14th warden, Dennis Rowell Whitehall Silk. Dennis Silk was born 49 years ago on an Indian reservation in Northern California where his father was a medical missionary. Prep school in Bognor and public school at Christ's Hospital was followed by a respectable degree at Cambridge and rather more important, a double blue in cricket and rugby. I decided very late in my Cambridge days that I wanted to schoolmaster. It became clear to me very suddenly and I can't even explain why. That's better. As for why I tried to headmaster, I, it's very, very difficult to, to say why. I sort of stumbled into it, really. I suppose I felt I was becoming very humdrum. And so I put in for Radley with no expectation whatsoever of, of getting it. And I woke up one morning and found I was warden of Radley. Although his degree is in history, the warden's teaching is confined to English literature, 10 40-minute periods a week. He teaches at all levels, the scholarship candidates as well as the junior boys. I mean, teaching was something I loved to do, but one does it so badly now because one is underprepared. In fact, I use teaching now much more as an excuse for having boys sitting in front of me, for getting to know them, getting to know their names, rather than for teaching, uh, as you and I would understand the term. Could lonely wait my endless rest with equanimity. Written by a young man or an old man? Hands up. Oh. What makes you say that? Yes? Um, could lonely wait my endless rest. Yes. What does that tell you? Well, he's, he's waiting to die. He's waiting to die. One part of him, he tells us, wasn't very old. What part of him? His heart. His heart. Now, could you take that a bit further? He wants to die, it seems. He's not, too, he's not very old man. He doesn't care. Uh, I think he does care. I think he cares very much. Um, and. Now, we're getting a little bit nearer the main point of the poem, yes? Maybe he doesn't think he's old enough to die. In one way, he is very definitely not old enough to die. In which way? Now, come on. In his mind, but he has said in his heart. And what do we associate the heart with? Yes, being active, but also, I mean... Feeling. And one word, come on, it begins with L, and you all want to love, yes. This is uh, a sad and, in a way, I agree with you, pessimistic poem about love. I think people do like to think that an interest is being taken in what they're doing. I certainly, when I was a boy, was gratified if the headmaster appears to watch me doing this or that. And you've still got the hair in his head. Uh, yeah. He's going to be covered up my head today. Paul, did your potter come out all right? Yes. Yeah. How do you throw these mini pots? Well, it's exactly the same. Just... But you have to have smaller fingers. Yes. I like that very much indeed. Cultivating his garden comes high on the list of things the warden likes doing. Can you bring the water up here? Uh, if we can uh, get these... Can you put him on the deck just for a moment, will you? The acre of land that supplies the school's kitchens with fresh vegetables is the warden's particular fiefdom, and his interest is genuinely shared by a hard core of enthusiasts. Otherwise, it's Radley's wrongdoers who may be sentenced to a stint on the warden's acre. The great thing about Earth is it doesn't answer back. I think that's why I enjoy gardening so much. It's a great antidote to the other thing. But Dennis Silk is never allowed to take it out on the uncomplaining sod for long. 
the woodwork master has an urgent task that requires his urgent attention. Can you change today, the today board, the sign for the today board to urgent? Yes. I wonder whether that was okay with you. you know, whether what do you feel about it? I, I'm, I don't mind, actually. I mean, if, if you want the board, if I you want the sign changed. I think today brackets urgent in, uh, exclamation mark is okay, sensible. That's fine. Well, so I'll put get, both things one, on. I'll get another one made up as well, then. Yeah. OK, fine. fine. Thanks, OK, sir. Pete. Uh, just, that's that's right. Just give them a little drink each, yes. uh, and I'm then oh, for... that's fine. Come in. Less serious breaches of discipline are dealt with by the social tutors or housemasters. The warden is the court of last resort. He can beat, and he can expel. Um, I'd first of all like to know what you did, Matthew. You can start. We um, hid in a bush and drank the... Uh... Where did this stuff mm -hmm. come from? What was it? It was brandy, sir. Where'd you get it? In um, Oxford, sir. Where in Oxford? Um, Victoria Wines, sir. Is that the first time you've ever been there? Yes, sir. Small bottle. Are you in the habit of drinking brandy at home? No, no sir. Not at home. Sorry? No, sir. Never? Well, occasionally when I have a glass or something, sir. With whose connivance? My father. Mm hmm How old are you? Fifteen? Fourteen, sir. Fourteen? Sir. And you, Nick? And what do you drink at home? Um, at a meal, maybe cider or wine, or sometimes beer. Mm -hmm. And then when we're having a more um, sociable meal with lots of people around, sometimes you have liqueurs afterwards. You have liqueurs at yes, home? Yes, sir. Well, you don't have any of those things here. And you were here when I spoke to the school, at the various levels? Yes. Uh, and presumably you don't think I mean what I say? No, we think you mean what you say, but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a challenge exactly. Well, what were you trying to prove last night? I'm not trying to prove anything, sir. It was... To, to sort of, it seemed like a fun idea. And do you think it's fun to go and sit in a bush in the middle of the night and drink brandy? Not having done it, no, sir. Having done it? Mm. Because apparently you were rather the worse for wear. And I shall be ringing up your parents and letting them know about this. Um, because if you were to do this again, you'd go. Yes, sir. And you understand that, and that's what I said to the whole school when I addressed them at the various levels a year ago. But mark my words, if you step out of line on this again, you're for it. And I mean that. And that doesn't mean just next term or the term after that. That means between now and the end of your time here. All this summer, the warden has been agonizing over a decision. His deputy, David Goldsmith, is moving at the end of term and a successor has to be appointed. There are two front runners, Anthony Hudson and Alan Dowding, both social tutors. But the warden could spring a surprise. Today, at last, the Dons will learn which of their number is to be elevated to the position of sub-warden. You've probably all been waiting expectantly for me to make up my mind about my disposition of forces for next year and beyond. Um, and after a great deal of thought, I have now decided what I want to do. And it is going to be as follows. With the school becoming rather bigger over the last few years, and the scope of the job becoming larger, I felt that Common Room really ought to have two immediate channels of communication to me. And therefore, I'm going to appoint a new sub-warden and a new position, a second master. I'm going to make Anthony Hudson the sub-warden, and I'm going to make Alan Dowding the second master. I'm making this appointment on a limited tenure of five years in the first instance. I expect it to work well. But if for any reason it didn't work, I expect all three of us would want a way out.
Dear Mr. Brand, many thanks for your letter, registration forms, and check, full stop. New paragraph, we much look forward to Edward's entry in September 1988, full stop. Yours sincerely. The next is to C.J. Gravatt. Dear Mr. Gravatt, many thanks for your letter, full stop. New paragraph. Sadly, I fear that we will have no place to offer your son, full stop. and as Giles is already ten and a half, we have no chance at all of finding a place for him, full stop. I am very sorry to have to reply in this disappointing way, full stop. Prudent parents have to start early if their offspring is to be offered a place here. I suppose viewed dispassionately public relations is the right term for a lot of what I try and do. It's not a, a phrase I'm too keen on, really. I, obviously, I've got to try and keep as many different people contented and happy as I can. You're wearing the right tie, I see. It's all right for us. The tie, for connoisseurs of this revealing item of male attire, is that of the Free Foresters, an exclusive and top-class cricket club. Major and Mrs. Edward Armistead have a toddler. They are looking at Bradley, and the warden is looking at this them. This is your first ever trip to Bradley. How much do you know about Bradley? Very little. Only what you told us in your brochure. <laughs> <laughs> that extremely unexciting brochure with no pictures or anything else. No, what in the first place made you think of us? Well, we're looking at a number of yes. schools. Yes. Um, you know, we must be frank about that. Absolutely. Um, Radley features very high on the on the list. Mm -hmm. We know a number of uh, old Radleyans. In fact, Charles's godfather is an old Radleyan. Now, I wonder if I know. Who's that? Bernard Casanova. Oh, yes. 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 The Casanova family. Yes. 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 We do know them. And how many... Is he uh, an only? No, he have... isn't. I've got two small daughters out Two here. daughters as well. Mm. Are they older or younger? They're both younger. Goodness me. <laughs> now, there must be masses of things you'd like to ask, and do far away. Well, the first thing is, um, I mean, we know that Radley is um, heavily, heavily booked far into the future. Mm -hmm. we, the first question we'd really like to ask is actually where do we stand with regard to Charles? I mean, how... <laughs> we obviously haven't got a guaranteed place. A it would be no secret that you could get a place for 1988. In fact, we're full up to the end of 1986. Ah. So you would be assured. We're obviously in a poor position as much as we, we don't know um, enough about the school yes. to decide upon a, a social. Yes. Uh, clearly, we could um, take advice on this from mm. our various chums, but... Yes. The grapevine works very, yeah. very mysteriously and swiftly. Yes. And once someone uh, heard that you were on the Radley list, they would be saying, oh, we well, must send him to Mr X's social. But, uh, well, in a moment, a boy will come and show you round. Yes. Um, uh, the point is, I can give you the party line. He'll tell you the truth about the place. Yes. And, um, again, in, in the old days, I mean, I suppose the sort of concept of a public school was if you um, play games and you, you know, you... That was it, really, games and, and academic work. But yes. presumably there's ample opportunity for music and uh, drama and debating societies and all the rest of this business, yes. which was actually a bit weak, I think, when I was at school. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a tremendous amount of time spent on drama. I always think it's the best team game we offer, actually. Yes. It involves more people. Yes. in a more meaningful way than any other thing. And if there's anything more tense than the first night of a school play for those taking part, I, I don't know what it is. It's I'll uh, bring Philip in. Have a look round his social. You may as well see a Radley social in the raw in midweek. 
and uh, I tremble to think what it'll look like. Sure but you can aim see. off a bit from your <laughs> salopia <laughs> day. Yes. And then uh, he can show you all the, the more formal places. Yeah, awesome. yes. And do get him to take you to the art centre, because that might that. interest you. It's yes. not completely Excellent. finished yet, but it'll give you some idea of what we're trying to do anyway. But far more than Radleyans yet to come, it is towards the Radleyans of today that the warden and his staff direct the bulk of their efforts. It's parents' day for the middle school. Mothers and fathers have come many miles for a heart-to-heart -heart with dons and social tutors. So it's a social event, as well as a good form guide for looming examinations. I, I think, you know, he's going to get an O-level. There's no problem. If he started happily. He has. Yeah, it's a very, very good O-men indeed. Of course. Well, never mind, he's interested. Yeah. And he's wearing bright red socks, which shows that he's a man of character. What was the last thing they dissected? Was it a, a mouse? They do a mouse, or... yes. They did a mouse last term. That... Well, we, we, we can they cope, I think. Go. Yes, yes can please cope. cope. If he yes. wants to shout at us, we don't mind. No. No. But, but I, I think back. he'll... We shout at us, back at him. But if you shout at us, we'll back him. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. That's nice of you. Thank you very much for your letter. I think it's marvellous that you write them personally. Well, I mean, it's the least one I can do, really. I've given Mr Money my answer. Oh, how very sweet of you. I'm afraid, well, it seems awful, didn't you, but I hope you do. Course, These uh, days, let's face it, anything is generous. You think of the peace. The warden is a justice of the peace in the local juvenile court. He's often struck by the fecklessness of parents in the cases that come up before him on the bench. But he also knows that parents in the upper middle bracket can be equally remiss. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, on behalf of all my colleagues, issue you with a very, very warm welcome. Now, the business of the day is very simple and can be contained, really, in just one word. And I want to emphasize it very strongly at the beginning. The word is cooperation. Because I think that we have embarked on an undertaking in which if we can achieve that sort of relationship, everything is possible. And that brings me really to another side of our philosophy. In one sense, we are simply trying to provide a variety of different opportunities for a boy to shine in. I think that a boy comes alive and becomes a real person when he has tasted success. And that may be on the games field. That may be his only area of success. And if it is, I'm delighted. And we will give him every bit of encouragement we can. I remember vividly a very fine man, an Australian headmaster called Sir Brian Hone, who was headmaster of Melbourne Grammar. We were talking about voluntary as opposed to compulsory. And he said to me, any boy who's worth his salt will take the easy way out. And he went on and said, what they need is coercion into experience. <laughs> <laughs> and that keeps coming back, coercion into experience. Take the horse to the water, and he may well drink. What are the enemies? Overindulgence is one of the biggest enemies we face. Too much, too early. In fact, I'd go so far as to say, too much, too early, kills. And a bit of hardship, earning what you do, is quite an important lesson to be learned. And I'll leave it at that. In May, Labour was committed to the abolition of schools like Radley and the withdrawal of their lucrative charitable status, which exempts them from tax on their investment income. I naturally was very worried before the last election by the portion of the Labour Manifesto which spoke of the abolition of fee-paying because that, naturally enough, meant the end of all independent schools which lived by their fees. Um, charitable status, naturally, would have hit us very hard if that had gone, but uh, I can see the point of that uh, whilst not agreeing that it is a good thing to hound education of any sort. The Conservatives, by contrast, were sympathetic. 
and the present government now proposes to spend public money on sending boys and girls to public school. Some people wouldn't want it. Some people think we're mad to do what we do, to take children out of their homes and board them. So it'd be very interesting to know how many people would actually want a public school education if it were freely available. I think we'd be surprised by how many people didn't want it. While the country reverberated to the sound and fury of the hustings, there was another election in Peyton's quad. I will introduce Mr Rupert Gaither for the National Front! Let it go down! We have need for a strong government, one with courage and, above all, patriotism! Patriotism, my friends. And yet, and yet you call us fascists. Is he a fascist, I ask you? Yes! Is he a Nazi? Yes! Does he in any way resemble Hitler? Yes! I have a dream of a strong Britain. I have a dream of a white Britain, a powerful Britain, an economically stable Britain, a crime-free Britain. Yeah. OK, this is Tim Huxley for the Workers' Revolutionary Party. Citizen comrades! Britain has seen the major political parties and our political system as a whole. Drag it down for years. The time is right for revolution. Shut up. I know you're all prejudiced against socialists in this school, but here's a socialist who believes in the Labour Party, who believes in the future of Britain, not just in the future of himself or his selfish money. second picketing. We're going to have freedom, we're going to use a secret ballot for the unions. The road ahead is tough. It is horribly tough. It is difficult. We are in a bad way at the moment, but we, I hope I say we, we are going to get up, John, and we are going to fight. country that I love. I love my country, and I hope you do too. Yeah.
there was never much doubt who would win. But Radley's mock election was not a mockery. Every boy over the age of 18 was entitled to vote in the general election. And with the speeches in Peyton's quad ringing in his ears, each 18-year-old went straight into the voting booths of his local constituency, Abingdon. Election night. Studies and common rooms strangely quiet and tense. Uh, conservative majority of 10,538, that's up from 8,454. Liberals still in second place, 15,000. Their vote up in Cheltenham, losing the deposit. I should just say one thing <laughs> about this picture. The little white dot shows you where Cheltenham is. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, Communist Party. <laughs> <laughs> It was a time of great suspense, for the outcome mattered greatly. Hoping for the best, but fearing the worst, the warden, sub-warden and sub-warden elect waited and watched together. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hornchurch. Now that's a Three, good one. Eight point five. Mm. It doesn't even feature. Uh, yeah, that was that was not even a featured one. That's outside all the range of prediction. That was the best result of the whole evening. You see, you've picked up your enormous amount. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 There's just a vague chance that we might win the election now. Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He couldn't come back. But he's not a He was meant to have a celebratory drink with the mayor. With He'll the need one, I should think. Edwards is in. He only had a thousand majority last time. Here's the Radley pair. Is it? Yes. Which one? The Rupert Edwards in Sea Social. Oh. He's the. Uh, he was Shadow Wales. returning officer for the constituency of Barney, Finchley, hereby declare. Margaret Hilda Thatcher, Conservative, 20,918. What a huge majority. What a marvellous thing to do. I declare that the said Margaret Hilda Thatcher has been duly elected to serve the Lord. She doesn't look like a Hilda. She's looking tremendous. She actually, she looked tired, I suppose, when she was so frightened. Yes. A corporate sigh of relief. Radley was safe. Though even the warden has one nagging doubt about the system. In a very real sense, I think it is divisive. Because however much uh, we try and demonstrate the reverse, you can only go to a public school if you can pay for it. And that is a very sad fact of life. 